Before I move forward, I would like everyone to create their business card template so that they can follow along with the video. And so let's talk about a couple of things before you jump into that. First, you need to create your InDesign document. And so you'll choose File, New, and Document. A business card or a standard business card is three and a half inches by two inches. So we will change our units to inches and make our business card three and a half by two inches. You can design a portrait or a landscape uh, business card. I'm going to do landscape. I'll turn facing pages off because you only need facing pages when you are making something that binds in some way. And then I like to make sure that my bleeds are always set to standard printing bleeds and I am going to reduce my margins to one eighth of an inch because if you had like the standard half an inch margins on a business card, it would be kind of uncomfortable how much buffer room you had around the edge of your page. Once you create your new document, you can take a few minutes to design a template. But because you're going to do this for an activity using a supplied Excel spreadsheet, you need to open that Excel spreadsheet. So if I open the file that I downloaded, I'm going to open, I want to open the Excel version of it. So please excuse me for a second while I go and find my Excel spreadsheet. When you look at the Excel spreadsheet, you can see that there are rows and columns. The rows represent, except for row one, rows two and beyond, represent the variable data fields or the number of variable data examples that you'll have. If you think back to our postcard examples from the slideshow, you might be changing the name, the photograph, and the percentage of the discount, and every different postcard will be represented by a row. The columns represent how many fields are variable. And so if we're doing business cards like we are for this example, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 people on the list that I'm looking at. I actually added this row, so you should only have 10. And then every time I create a new business card, there will be four fields that will change. So Amanda Ansel is an art director. She has her own phone number and she has a specific email address. Maria Jones is the chief operating officer. She has her own email and she has her own uh, phone number. It's important that you don't skip any rows or columns as you're entering your information. So if you wanted to add another field, which is optional for this activity, you could add another field in F, G, H, or I. But if you skip column E, you will have issues when you try to import your content, so don't skip any rows or any columns. The first row is called the header row, and it is what you will see visually when you link your automation in InDesign or your data merge in InDesign. And so it's important that it's descriptive. Don't call it column A, B, C, and D. Put that this is the employee name, this is the employee's position, this is the phone number, and this is the email address. As a couple of tips as you're designing your template, um, First, if you're creating your spreadsheet, don't make the spreadsheet title longer than any of the individual responses or try not to make it too much longer because it will visually take up space in your template and if, if it causes weirdness in the formatting, simply because the title is too long, it might make you feel uncomfortable in your design process. Also, when you're designing your template, you could insert employee name goes here and position title goes here. But what I recommend is take the longest variable field and use that in your template. So when I'm designing my business card, I'm going to use Andrea Hollingsworth because she has a longest name. And I'm going to use the shipping and receiving manager as the position title because that's the longest position. And then all the emails, I mean, all the phone numbers are the same length. But when I use an email, I'm going to use Andrea's email address because it's the longest field. If I use the longest field possible in the design, it will make it so that I don't get any overset text errors that say, hey, the text you're trying to input here, the variable content you're inputting doesn't fit in the field. If you use the biggest one, the worst case scenario is that the smaller names don't take up as much room. So I'd like everyone to take a minute and jump over to InDesign and create a business card template. This is the same file that you will use for your submission for the project, act, well, the smaller activity with this um, module. 
Uh, you can choose the theme, you can create a company name, um, but at the very least you need to include text fields for the employee name, position title, phone number, and email address. When you're done you can move on to the next video and I will walk through the process of linking your spreadsheet, your .csv file, and your text fields to create a data merge.